Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and for my new subscriber, subscribers, <laughs> I'm glad you're joining us. My name is Yvonne. In today's video I want to start with the tutorial series uh, I have made to make this waterfall uh, journal. Beautiful how the pages flow and it has on the cover a flip out. I'm going to uh, show you, this is also part one in, uh, in making this journal, but I just want to flip through uh, the journal so you'll know what you will be making if you want to uh, follow along. On the top part of the first flip, there's a card inserted for journaling. It flips open, beautiful collage here. There's no room for journaling here, it's just decoration. This is the back of a coin envelope, we'll come to that later. And we're going to make a lace or fabric if you want. Pocket on there, beautiful papers, just some little collaging and a journaling card to go inside. Journaling space on the back, it tucks in here. Then it flips open like this. And this is a coin envelope, which is decorated uh, for extra interest. And inside, just a beautiful image, a journaling card with journaling space on the back. And this is already also a tuck spot for some extra image you can put in there or some extra writing. This journal is for sale. So please, uh, if you're interested, please let me know. My email address is uh, in the description box and we'll uh, just contact me and we'll uh, discuss it. And I made it uh, with some decoration, but uh, I want the recipient to uh, treat it as if, or a writing journal, or to decorate it more uh, yeah, yourself, to make it more your own. A vintage envelope or a full vintage envelope, beautiful image on the back of the of this flip. And here we make make yeah, this is what we're going to make on camera also. A journaling card with journaling space on the back. Then it flips open to this side, the top tuck with a beautiful image. Also beautiful background and in here is a journaling card that's inserted uh, into the top with a little bow for some extra interest. <coughs> Sorry. Some embossing on the back and journaling space here. This can go back in here. And this, yeah, in a way it's the the cover of the journal, but I paper clipped it extra because uh, the doily is uh, yeah a bit loose, but I really like it on here with the white flowers, but it's a bit loose and that's why I put the extra paper clip. And in here a beautiful journaling card, gorgeous image, some uh, texture paste and on here also the lace is speaking out and on the back a vintage uh, paper. Oh, here is the, the rest of the lace. <laughs> I was looking uh, and you uh, it had to be peeking out. And vintage paper on the back as writing space. And it goes into the doily and it stays, but yeah, it can flop open, flip open, I don't know. So that's why I just put the paper clip for extra. And this is a large envelope. We'll make that on camera also Com completely. Uh, everything you see we're going to make on camera. This is the large envelope. It's completely decorated with the beautiful papers of the kit. kits. It opens like this. A lot of room to put ephemera in to use further in the journal, a closure, and then you see here the papers how they 
flow like a waterfall. And I just decorated some pages with uh, fabric or lace. Well, yeah, you'll see when we flip through it, just to make it a bit more interesting. But I want the recipient to really make the journal uh, their own. So there's lots of room to embellish further. And I put some pages in between. So this is not part of the waterfall, but when you flip this, again, it takes part in the, in the waterfall. And that's what I wanted. But uh, if you do it just like this, you don't have that many pages uh, in the journal. And now you can put some extra in between. On the rail paper, I made a tuck spot, a little collage with a beautiful saying. All interesting papers, digitals. I used, uh, I think, four or five of uh, Ruby and Pearl's digitals, and I combined it with, uh, yeah, all kinds of different papers. Vintage music sheet, and the digital again. Wrapping paper. This is also digital. Uh, this is also from uh, one of the kits. Beautiful paper. This is uh, real vintage receipt paper, and it's uh, aged on the back. And you see the papers get bigger with every flip. This is all German font. I adore this paper, so I had to include it. Also a beautiful digital of one of the kids. Real old uh, music sheet. This is vintage uh, ledger. And I left this open so the recipient can make a pocket out of it. You can tear it here and tear it completely off and, and make it a page. Just whatever you want to do with it. And then the center page is also a digital and I uh, put it in, in an angle. This is more wide than here to constantly have that waterfall uh, effect. Little collaging on the digital. And then we have the back sides of it. Also the top top of lace. And the beautiful papers on the back side. This is an actual, oh, <laughs> this has to be like this. And then the wrapping paper has a flip. But if you think, oh, that's way too much, just tear it off and use it uh, in, on another way, in another way. This is, no, I glued it down. No, I was thinking, is it the top talk? No, I glued it down. And for some extra interest, I put some uh, dotted lace on top of here. It's loose, just to accentuate the white flowers that were already in the image on the trees. And it leaves still a lot of writing space underneath. And uh, I'll show you everything. Here is a beautiful tuck. You can glue it on two sides and make a tuck spot out of it to put a card like that. But you can also use it like this for extra writing space or extra collaging. But just to add some interest. The book page and the digital. And this is the back. And I made with the lace also a tuck spot. And because the, the journal is for sale, I will put some extra papers and things in there so the, the buyer can uh, use those papers to decorate the journal further. Then in the last episodes of the this, I made in a separate uh, ephemera um, video. I will link it down below also. It's an altered envelope, a vintage envelope but it's for this journal. And these two are, uh, I made on camera in the pretty last uh, episodes of making the journal. I already made these. And no, I think I didn't do this on camera. This I think I did. But 
this ephemera will be included uh, in the journal and yeah maybe I'll make more I have to see uh, how the time goes but this is what we will be making and the rest of the video is the start of the making of the waterfall journal I wish you a lot of fun watching I hope you're crafting alone or maybe later make this waterfall journal because it's a great addition to the traditional <laughs> junk journals. So this is completely something different again. Enjoy watching. Hello, I'm back. In the intro you saw the finished product. I can't show you uh, during the tutorial because I didn't make uh, the complete journal as a prototype. I'm just going to make it and let you follow along and if I um, come across uh, accidents or things that could be better then we can uh, tackle them together. <laughs> I made a little template because I didn't have a prototype. The flaps like you saw in the intro, the front flap, this is the back of the coin envelope, it flips this way, the coin envelope will be closed as an envelope, we'll be decorating this, and this flips open like here, we'll be decorating this, and kind of this will be the cover of the real journal. This is a large envelope that will be closed, but you can uh, put some lovely items to use in, in the journal in the envelope. And then on the back, attached to that large envelope, will be our back piece and that has the spine and the envelope will be attached on here, like so, with a fabric hinge and that allows you to let the journal grow a bit. Uh, the pages will just be one signature because I just wanted to try this method out. And this is uh, a bit based on the tag box a lot of people are making uh, on YouTube and on Instagram. And also Amity Bloom uh, does the, the flips on top of her cover. So that's a bit of a combination that inspired me to make it like this. And I saw a couple of uh, creators make a waterfall uh, journal and I really liked it. So the envelope will be until here, the back cover until here, and in between there will be the waterfall pages like you saw in the finished product. And I'll just let you tag along, maybe you want to craft along, that's also possible. And that's why I'm not giving the measurements in these, in these tutorials. It, it will be a series, otherwise the videos will be uh, way too long. Um, in the description box will be my email address, memoryjournalsbyyvonne at gmail.com. And if you want, I'll give you the measurements of all the items I use. And you can have a template of the coin envelope because I made it myself. Uh, this flap has to come on this side and I'll show you how I did that. And the envelope, I have to finish it because I want to see if people are interested and then I'll do it with ink and uh, pretty it up a bit. But this will be the template of the, en the big envelope because not everybody has a envelope punch board because that is what I used uh, for this and that determined the sizes of the rest of my journal. This is, is just a, a measurement I took uh, of an envelope that, that is on the punch board and then accordingly I made them all smaller because I wanted smaller here and smaller there so the, the waterfall effect is completely throughout the journal uh, visible. And that's what I really uh, liked. Then all the items, that's the first step, of course, uh, that you cut all your pieces. And I'll show you what I did 
what I used for the big envelope because when it's open, it's very large. It's a, a piece uh, 11 by 11 inches. And if you have really thin cardstock, that can be used. Uh, but I wanted to decorate it with uh, digitals, so I took a clothing pattern paper and used that to make the envelope. And like you see here, if you use my templates, uh, you have to cut and paste to get the complete shape. And if you have a larger uh, piece of paper, you can use that. This is thin, but it doesn't matter because on both sides I will decorate with uh, digitals and then it will be sturdy enough because I don't want it too bulky because there are also a lot of layers uh, that's going on on top of that. So that's our envelope and we'll be decorating that. And then the coin envelope, the same thing. I use the pattern paper because this also doesn't fit on an A4 and in the description if you want to type and uh, follow along and, and you mail me you get all the measurements of the, the height of the paper you need to make this and then you can uh, print this twice and attach this here and you have your coin envelope. But if you have the punch board, that will be easy because you can make that. This you have to do by hand. Uh, originally I drew it like this, but in how I want to decorate it, it is better like this, this flap over that. And then I had to adjust this a bit, but you can always do that because you might, might de uh, decorate your coin envelope completely different than, uh, than mine. So I selected also the, the papers I want to use, because otherwise, yeah, <laughs> again, the videos will be uh, very long. Let's see, what I do I have to... Oh yeah, I want to uh, use fabric hinges. And you can leave them visible if you want. So decorate this first and then hinge. Or you can hinge them first and decorate them then. And, but then you have to be mindful that even though this is very thin, I don't know if it picks up on the camera, not, yeah, you can see my fingers through it. It's uh, unbleached cotton. It's very sturdy, but thin. Um, but if you put a digital on here, and I just uh, print my digitals on uh, 80 grams copy paper, it will show a bit, but because we are decorating it with all things on that digital paper, I don't really mind. Sometimes I mind, uh, that, that's something you have to decide, do you want your hinges to be visible? Because then, if so, you'll take away a bit of your image. So I'm going to try and uh, do both. I don't want them to show all the time, if I can um, yeah, cover them up, I think I will. I thought of rings, because I like the effect, but I tried it with this uh, template, and if I put it on my, uh, yeah, also my template, and I turn it around, because here I will be journaling, you're really feeling the bumps and then there would be even more six uh, rings so it would be yeah too bulky so I discarded that idea although I really like it but if you make uh, just a tag book and that's it and you, you journal on uh, loose tags or cards that's a completely different story because it's a, it's a nice idea so I'll keep it with uh, the fabric hinges so first cut your templates, you can cu also cut the fabric hinges, I did that. I may adjust them a little, and you need 
four because the envelope will be attached to the to the back. Then I have to check my <laughs> my schedule because it's the first time I'm uh, doing a series uh, tutorial, so I have to be mindful that I'm not forgetting anything. But when we're decorating and uh, crafting, we'll come to that, so it's not a real big problem. No, nope, I've got everything uh, covered, what I wanted to say. And I wanted to start with the big envelope. So I'm going to put this to the side. I'm using, but I'll put it in the description box also, uh, Ruby and Pearl Digitals, because I really like them. And uh, it's also nice to give some extra support to, uh, to Heather. My coin envelope. And I prepared because, as you know, if you're following uh, me longer, I'm always doubting and doubting and it takes way too long, too much time. So I put numbers on here and the corresponding papers have the numbers also on it and which uh, kit they're from because then it will be a bit easier. I already inked the edges you'll be seeing and also a bit on this side because I want to turn it around. I want to let the digital peek out a bit because then I maybe can roughen the edge up because that's a style I really like. So I'm going to stick this together. And let's see how far we will be getting. Yeah, here is a mark I made just to see how the the digital would, how far it would go. But I'm going to uh, to put glue all over the paper. Oh, it's not enough anymore. Then the small one. I hope everyone is uh, doing well. Here in the Netherlands, uh, we had some uh, some great sunshine days, and yeah, often it's when it's warm, it's uh, too warm for me. <laughs> It doesn't have to be too hot for me. But it's nice to have uh, good weather again and it's nice to sit outside, eat outside. So no complaining there. Let's see because uh, the thing I like about uh, wet glue, you have uh, time no, it's not really sticking out. Okay. With wet glue you always have a wiggle room. Ah. Now I'm going wrong. At the beginning. Because I was so in my thoughts with the with the numbers that I want this to go, go underneath there. So I have to. But wet glue is also forgiving, so not a problem. I have to glue this first. really excited uh, to be doing this tutorial just to see how it goes and I'm making a journal uh, start to finish it's uh, 
a new learning process for me. And that's always good to try new things. Let's see if this doesn't stick because then the digital will be covered with. Ah, here I put it on there. <laughs> that I had to uh, stick this down as the second part. <laughs> but if I don't pay attention to that, then it goes wrong. But it doesn't matter. Let's see that my head is not in the way. a bit of the pattern paper. Let's see if I can get that out of there. Not completely, so I have to trim it later. Yeah, there was still a bit of glue. Now let's see if I can get the glue back on here. Hmm. Maybe it still sticks. Hmm. I think I might be lucky. Is it really greenish yet? I used uh, a couple of uh, William Pearls digitals, but they were going uh, very well together. And normally uh, I like a mix, I don't always uh, want to use digitals, but yeah, no, I felt like using, trying to use uh, a digital kit almost completely. Completely, I didn't, uh, I didn't manage, but it doesn't matter. I think I'll, I have to trim this first. I think I'll just cut it with my scissors. I could uh, pass it through the paper trimmer. And something I didn't, uh, didn't uh, pay attention to, but this is a wet glue, of a, also makes uh, the paper a bit wrinkly. So, it will, yeah, here it damaged the digital a bit. But I'm going to decorate it on there, so I don't think it will be a problem. And here is a little excess. But I think I'll go around it with my ink uh, later. This I don't, yeah, you can see faintly the the curve from the from the flap. And here I have to cut the excess corner. Here also, maybe I will use my uh, my trimmer to make it uh, a bit a bit more clear where I have to fold. And this is just, I marked the 6 inch, so I can always use it 
uh, if something doesn't really uh, fit to the side. Like that, that will be our flap. Here. Let's see where my fold line is, and then later I can cut those corners. Yeah, and that's just why it's so easy to uh, to use the punch board because here you can hardly see the the line. I'm going to make a little pencil mark. Let's see if I can see it here. Yeah. But it's nice if there are options, if you don't have uh, some of the materials, that you can use something else and you can make the same um, projects. Let's see where this ends. So if you make your own uh, template, uh, it is a good idea to, to fold your base the way it should and then you won't have a problem uh, or less a problem with, uh, with folding it. Because if you don't have any lines on there, I I could have marked them with uh, with pencil. That's something I'm thinking of now, because it's going to be decorated on both sides, so pencil marks wouldn't have been a problem. If I'm making sense, because this will be covered also. So if you would make the lines with a pencil or a, or a pen, you wouldn't see it anyway. Can I do this? Yes. And this one. And everybody who has a punch board knows um, these corners are a bit rounded, so if you like that, it's not necessary, but yeah, put this to the side and let's fold it first and then glue the inside. And because this is one, yeah, like one paper, it wasn't uh, on this envelope. The hinge has to be visible. I'll explain to you why. Because this paper is completely from this side to this side. So if you want to put a hinge here, you can tuck it underneath paper. Or another option was that you can uh, fold the envelope and decorate all the pieces individually. But I like that this is going over it, so you always have a beautiful edge. I'm going to ink it, otherwise yeah, you have to pay more attention that two papers come together there and you have to really uh, ink them up. I'm going to round these corners a bit because I do think that's more nice. Just a bit. And here also because it's interfering with this, so I'm going to make this a bit better on this side, make it a bit more round. So you can always adjust it to your needs and the way it it fits your project. Let's see where it interferes also. Yeah, this also. So all the corners will be a bit rounded. And 
and I'm going to uh, decorate the bases and attach the hinges and then I'm really further going to embellish uh, what I want to do uh, on there. Tags and cards and things like that. I'm a bit off, I see, and yeah, I'm a bit of a perfectionist, so I'm going to trim this. It's not much, but it's an easy fix, so I'll do that. I will ink it later. And this is something you can also uh, adjust if you want. Oh, these, I forgot these. These are rounded, these ones. I still need to do. We just had a, a really stormy weather. It was uh, warm and sunny. And then it was, uh, they said it would. A really storm and rain and a lot of wind, but it didn't take long and then it was over again. The ground can really need some uh, some extra water, but what, what fell now is uh, it isn't uh, enough. I like, I'm going to make something here, like an embellishment, uh, yeah, just for an example, maybe something like this or a label, and then you can put the flap underneath that. So that can also come later. And on the inside, put my things to the side. Where is my ah here? I want to use the music paper from the uh, from the digital, and the envelope will close like this. So I want the number being visible. So I'm going to stick this down, and as far as it goes, I'll trim these parts because that's not necessary. First, I think I'm going to glue the, the flap because I think it will be easier working like that and then piece by piece until how far I want it to go. It's been a while since I, uh, I made a journal, so I really like making one again. Because I'm still uh, working in my own uh, journal, that's the last one I made, and it's uh, not long, uh, not full yet. And it will take a while because I only, I discovered I only did one third of the journal, and I posted it on uh, on Instagram and. The journal is already uh, getting pretty bulky, so I have to be to make yeah, more collages or something, or at least pages that aren't as bulky as I usually do. But that doesn't matter. I don't mind. Uh, I think I'll glue this in here and then later cut the corner again. I think that will be easier. And then here, let's see, I don't want too much excess, let's see if I can, it will be nice if you look into the pocket that it will, uh, uh, that you will see the music paper, that it doesn't uh, instantly show this because Oh, this could be nice because yeah, it's it's a style also. So, but I really like the, the digitals to show. 
I'm not going to go straight. And this is too long. Let's see how far I want it. Uh, I can put it almost to the to the bottom. The paper is there, so it's not really a problem. Hmm. It just started to rain again. I have my window open because the temperature is not uh, really uh, going down, so it's very warm in my uh, in my craft room. But I have to pay attention that it doesn't uh, rain. Uh, the rain doesn't come in. Let's see. No far. Maybe not. Oh, the easiest way I'm doing this, but it's doing the job. It's a very beautiful. Uh, music digital. I really like the, the vintage music papers. I also have uh, original ones. I really like to use them in the journal. Now I, I will use it uh, as a page in the waterfall journal. I don't know if you're familiar with the waterfall journals. I discovered them, uh, I think, a couple of months ago. I'll put the, the links down below from uh, the creators. I saw, uh, saw make uh, waterfall journals because there are two artists and they make it completely different from completely different papers and then yeah it, it looks completely different i have to uh, let this dry because i have uh, glue here i don't know if my glue is will Yeah, the paper is very thin, um, otherwise I would uh, reduce wet glue. I can cut the corners again. And then I'll leave this to rest and dry properly because it's completely wet now. A little piece that doesn't want to be cut. Let's see on this side. I think I have glue everywhere. This is a bit more difficult because now I have to cut it from this angle. Like that. It feels very strange because of all the glue. So this will be uh, uh, pull this in. Yeah, I've got glue everywhere. Yeah, normally you have a, an envelope and you just uh, decorate the envelope. I never did it like this before. So it's really getting used to, and I, I don't know, yeah, 
Maybe you have tips on how we could do it differently. But it's okay. Like that. This is pretty thick. Yeah, I have to let the glue dry because otherwise it's crinkling. But I wanted to show you that this is what you will see as when you open this, this will be like the front cover and I will be decorating it uh, more. I will stop the video uh, here because this has, uh, has to dry. I'll leave it completely open uh, under some heavy books uh, so it, it will uh, flatten uh, very good. Thank you so much for watching and supporting my channel. If you like this video, I would love for you to subscribe or give a like and a comment. I would love to hear from you. And I will see you next time in part two. Bye.